In this model, you learn a new concept called non-parametric Bayesian approach. And in particular, you learn what is called Dirichlet process to model non-parametric regression. In this module, we'll talk about non-parametric Bayesian analysis. And in particular, we'll talk about Dirichlet process models. So first of all, what is a non-parametric Bayesian analysis? And that means we do not assume any parametric structure on the prior. And even if we have a likelihood, but overall it is done in a non-parametric fashion with a distribution-free approach. So first we'll have our learning objective as introduction to Dirichlet process models. And then we'll talk about little bit of stick breaking and Chinese tester process, which you'll find more detail in your notes because of technical assumption. Uh, it becomes a little complicated. And then we'll talk about Gibbs sampler for Dirichlet process model. And applications are given in the notes. So the Dirichlet process is an infinite dimensional generalization of the Dirichlet distribution. It can be used to set as prior on unknown distributions. These unknown densities can be used to extend finite component mixture models to infinite component mixture models. So there are different motivations given in your notes you'll find. Uh, we'll talk about the Dirichlet distribution, which is very familiar to most of the students. Let theta be equal to theta 1 to theta m. Then theta is a Dirichlet with parameters alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha m. If the density function of theta 1, theta 2, theta m is represented as the formula given in your notes, but which is really the ratio of two gamma, gamma function, gamma of sum of alpha k divided by product of gamma of alpha k. Whole thing pro take the product with theta k raised to the power alpha k minus one. k is from one to m. The distribution over possible parameter vectors for a multinomial distribution and it is conjugate prior for the multinomial. So this is very important that the Dirichlet distribution is over possible parameter vectors for a multinomial distribution and it is literally the conjugate prior for the multinomial. That means that if you take, take the product of the multinomial density with the Dirichlet prior, the posterior will be proportional to another Dirichlet distribution. Again, we have to adjust the normalizing constant. Clearly, the beta distribution is a special case of a Dirichlet for two dimensions, that is when m equals two. We can draw something called Bayesian histogram. So suppose yi are iid with f, where f is a density, but unknown. The goal is to obtain a base estimate of the density f. So here, f is a density function. But earlier, in a parametric inference, we were trying to estimate the parameter. But here, it is really a function we are trying to estimate. The histogram is often used as a simple form of density estimate. In a Bayesian histogram, what we assume that we have pre-specified knots, C equals C0, C1 up to C sub K, to define our histogram estimate with C0 less than C1 up to less than CK. And YI belongs to C0 to CK, the closed interval. 
a probability model for the density that is analogous to the histogram can be expressed as f of y will be sum of some indicator function of y belongs to ch minus 1 to ck times pi h over ch minus ch minus 1 and h from 1 to k with pi equals pi 1 to pi k an unknown probability vector. Base specification with the prior distribution for the probabilities. If we assume a Dirichlet prior distribution for pi, then as I mentioned, the posterior distribution of pi will be again a Dirichlet. The posterior distribution of pi you can uh, express in different forms. And in that way, this form mentioned in your class note will be the representation of the Bayesian histogram. So the Bayesian histogram estimator does an adequate job approximating the true density, but the results are sensitive to the number and locations of knots. The Bayesian histogram estimator does an adequate job in approximating the true density. This approach allows prior information to be included and allows easy production of interval estimates and hence has some practical advantages over classical histogram estimators. The Dirichlet prior distribution is perhaps not the best choice due to the lack of smoothing across adjacent beans, but it does have the advantage of conjugacy and simplicity in interpretation of the parameters. Dirichlet process. So let's talk about what is a Dirichlet process. A Dirichlet process is a distribution over distributions. Let G be Dirichlet process distributed, that is G has a the Dirichlet process with parameter alpha and G0. We call G0 is the base distribution and alpha or A is a positive scaling parameter. G is a random probability measure that has the same support as G sub 0. Uh, in the notes you will find various Gaussian setup like G0 if you choose as your base distribution and G is Dirichlet process alpha G0 then you can get various scenario as indicated in your class note. G0 is continuous so the probability that any two samples are same is zero. However, G is a discrete distribution made up of a countably infinite number of point masses. Hence there is a non-zero probability of two samples colliding. Sample from Dirichlet process. If G is a DP A G0, then Xi given G is distributed as a G for I from 1 to N, their IID given the distribution G. So marginalizing out G introduces dependencies between X sub I. Now how do you take samples from the Dirichlet process? We assume such that we view these variables as a specific order and are interested in the behavior of Xn given the previous n minus 1 observation. So xn given x1 up to xn minus 1 will be x sub i with probability 1 over n minus 1 plus alpha and we take a new draw from g sub 0 with remaining probability that is alpha over n minus 1 plus alpha. So let there be k unique values for the variables. And then we sample uh, Xn as I mentioned given the remaining 
and then we can write down the joint density p x1 up to xn as integral of product. Notice that the formulation which is given in detail in your lecture note of the joint distribution does not depend on the order we consider the variables. And this process is then we identify there is a k unique values for the variables x k star k from 1 to k and that will give you the samples from the Dirichlet process. Now there is a different scheme called blackwell mcqueen Orn scheme and that's a very efficient method also to obtain the samples from Dirichlet process. Suppose G is distributed with Dirichlet process with parameter A and G sub zero and Xn given G is distributed with G. Assume that G sub zero is a distribution over colors and that each X sub N represents the color of a single ball placed in the arm. Start with an empty arm on step n with probability proportional to a draw xn distributed as g sub 0 and add a ball of that color to the arm. With probability proportional to n minus 1 that is the number of balls currently in the arm pick a ball at random from the arm record its color as x sub n and return the ball into the arm along with a new one of the same color. For more detail, please read the reference Blackwell and McQueen in 1973 paper. Uh, then there are other complex processes, the Chinese restaurant process, Indian buffet process, and details you can find out from your lecture notes. Uh, it is sort of clearly stated there, but implementation of these <coughs> process is kind of tricky and it takes some time to pick up those. Best thing is to try over a data set. Now finally we'll talk about stick breaking process. This is a very very efficient approach of taking sampler from Dirichlet process. So in 1994, Sethu Raman developed a constructive way of forming G known as stick breaking. The stick breaking helped practitioner to implement the Dirichlet process in a real way. And to describe the stick breaking procedure, we first take a sample V1, V2 up to V sub i from a beta distribution with parameter 1 and A. And then we actually draw X1 star, X2 star, X i star from G sub 0. And then we obtain pi i of V as V i times product of 1 minus V sub j, j from 1 to i minus 1. And then g will be simply obtained by sum of i from 1 to infinity, pi sub i of V times delta x i star. Where delta sub x i star is the indicator function. And then we continue the process like x1 star is drawn from g sub 0, then draw a v1 from beta with 1, parameter 1 and a, then pi1 equals v1, draw x2 star from g sub 0, draw v2 from beta 1 and a, and continue and form the pi2 as v2 times 1 minus v1 and continue this process. So suppose the parameter A is a positive real valued scalar 
then G naught is a non-atomic probability distribution over support set A. If G is dp, alpha or A to G0 and G0 as the baseline measure, then for any finite set of partitions A, which will be A1 union A2 up to union AK, G of A1 up to G of AK, that vector will have a Dirichlet distribution with parameter A times G0 A1 up to G0 AK. Uh, we can talk about the DP mixture model, which is really a general kernel mixture model, where f of y given p is integral f of y given theta dp theta, where f of y given theta is the kernel with theta include location and scale parameters. A Dirichlet process prior on p leads to f of y will be sum of pi of h of y given theta h star. So where pi denote the probability weights are sampled from a Dirichlet process, stick breaking process with parameter a and with theta h distributed as p sub zero independently for h from one to infinity. The DP mixture model plays a major role in non-parametric Bayes method. A key question is how to conduct posterior computation under the DP or Dirichlet process. This initially seems problematic in that the mixing measure P is characterized by infinitely many parameters. A clever way around this problem is to marginalize out P to obtain an induced prior distribution on the subject specific parameters theta which is the vector of theta 1 up to theta n. Then we have another scheme called polya on scheme and it is a clever way around this problem is to marginalize out of p to obtain induced prior as I mentioned earlier. In particular, marginalizing out P, we obtain the polya on predictive rule. So the predictive distribution of P theta i, given theta 1 up to theta i, is proportional to alpha over alpha plus i minus 1 P0 theta i, plus sum of j from 1 to i minus 1 of 1 over alpha plus i minus 1 and then the delta theta j. In fact, I mentioned the Chinese restaurant process. It's a metaphor is commonly used in describing the polya on scheme. We can now talk about blocked Gibbs sampler. Blocked Gibbs sampler is done in few steps. By marginalizing out the random probability measure P, we give up the ability to conduct inferences on P. By having approaches that avoid marginalization, we open the door to generalization of Dirichlet process mixtures, or simply DPMs, for which marginalization is not possible analytically. One approach for avoiding marginalization is to rely on the construction of f of y as sum of pi sub h of f of y given theta h. Because the stick breaking construction orders the mixture component so that the weights are stochastically decreasing in the index h for a sufficiently high index n, we will have that sum of pi sub h has a distribution concentrated near zero. The truncation approximation of the DP leads to a straightforward expression. The block Gibbs sampler and related all the formulas are given in the notes and there are various applications in non-parametric Bayes also performed and given in your lecture notes. 
Thank you. So in this model, you have learned how to perform non-parametric regression using the Bayesian technique. And in particular, you learned Dirichlet process prior and few other concepts which are used for performing uh, the regression estimate under the non-parametric framework. That means a distribution-free approach for the error term.